Yes, well, I do think that rather than an impala, it's a diker, now that we've managed to have a bit of a closer look, so a smaller species of antelope. And funny enough, it's pretty much nearly finished, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think there's much, too much of it left, but enough maybe for her to have a few more bites throughout the night. She's very protective. It's almost like she's sitting on top of it just to make sure that it doesn't fall down. I'm sure she dropped many a kills when she was little and Karula was probably not too impressed. Now she's looking down because pretty much at the base of the tree, the marula tree that she's in, there is an elephant. There we go. So we've got a leopard up in a tree a dead tiger and an elephant feeding underneath. How is that? <laughs> I think these Ellies have been around her the whole afternoon and nobody's managed to even notice that they're all so close to one another. She definitely knows that the elephant is there. She's just, she was gazing down upon it and, but I think she knows she's safe there. She's not too bothered. I mean, this particular elephant wouldn't really managed to get her, not even if he'd stretched out its trunk. So I think she knows that and that's why she's so happy to be up there and safe. Hello, you pretty girl. <laughs> I think maybe now she's also realized that it's safer for her not to come down at the moment just because there's a big bowl underneath her. And who knows, maybe she's starting to wake up for her more the, from her daily slumber. We'll start moving around later on as the elephant moves off. I wonder if she perhaps is going to try and catch another little diker or another impala. There were a few not too far from here, so I wouldn't be surprised if she actually managed to catch herself something else. Like I said, I think sometimes maybe leopards, they use bigger animals like the elephant down there to be able to hunt. Rachel, you are saying that it was just three weeks ago when Hosanna and Shongila were last seen together. Uh, that is amazing, that's probably even better. I thought it had been quite a long time, but again, I did go through a period where I was a bit disconnected from internet, uh, from the internet in general. So I think I can always rely on you guys to let me know what's been happening while I've been away. So three weeks. Still quite rare for them to be seen together. I think now as time passes and as every day goes by, the chances of seeing the two of them together, they're going to become rarer and rarer. Because normally siblings in the wild would n not really meet up again. Francis from Israel, you're wondering what would happen if the elephant shook the tree. Well, one of the things that I reckon would happen would be that Shangile would become very alert and probably just hold on to dear life on the on that marula branch where she is now. Um, the, I saw once, uh, on a very long time ago, an, a bull elephant, but I think this bull was even a must if I can remember correctly, um, tried to get a leopard that was climbing up a tree just because he was so irritated with everything around it and he did start trying to pull branches down to bring the leopard down, but it was a different species of tree, a tree that, you know, the lower branches were much lower than this one, I would say closer to where the elephant's head is now. So if the elephant started shaking the tree trying to get to the leopard, I reckon all she would have to do is just climb to a higher branch and she would be out of harm's way. I don't think however this elephant has got a clue that she's there. Definitely not one clue. <laughs> the elephant's just been feeding around. I wonder if he thinks we're looking at it. Carter, you're wondering if leopards have emotions uh, the same way we do. And you are 12 years old, and that's a very interesting question. Um, it's been a source of great debate, whereas animals have feelings the same way as humans. 
um, there are lots of scientific studies that have been done that, you know, point in this direction that they have feelings and then they recognize members of their social groups or their offspring. But I think it's very hard to tell if they feel the same things as what we do or the same way that we do, basically or pretty much because we can't really speak their language. So they have no way of letting us know. Um, I do think, and this is my own very personal view, that they, they feel things in a very strong manner. I think their, their comprehension of what goes around them in terms of social bonds and what's happening and you know if some of their family members get killed or anything I do think they've got some sort of understanding of that I have seen on a few occasions mothers that have lost cubs come to the same spot where the cubs have been killed and just call and call and call and return so scientifically I don't think there's there's any study that can prove this but um, I think just in my experience in the bush, and maybe I'm a bit too much of a romantic person, I do think that, yeah, they, they can feel. They definitely feel pain and they get excited and they get stressed and all of these things. But I think it, it goes a bit beyond the very mechanical side of, of feelings. Probably many rangers would disagree with me and that's why I say I think this is a very personal interpretation of, of what we see around and probably it's just me transferring onto the animals my own personal views of the world which could definitely happen so I think it's an, an, an open-ended question I don't I don't know how do you feel about your dog do you believe your dog has got or your cat if you've got a cat it's a very tough question this one and I don't think there's a definitive answer for it so it depends who you ask, they might say yes, depends who you ask, they might say no.